Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Poe, and today I'm doing week 34 of my 2022 reads. This week I read a few more new releases that made me very, very happy, and then I decided to do some old comfort rereads as well. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. So the first new release that I finished this week and was so happy about was The Oleander Sword by Tasha Suri. This is book two in the Burning Kingdom series. I have a review for The Oleander Sword up already. I posted it a few days ago and I loved it. So this series is this epic Indian uh, inspired fantasy that has so much political intrigue and excellent magic. It's got really, really complicated relationships between people excellent queer relationships. It is just everything that I love about epic fantasy combined with just such cool, really, really cool magic and world building and characters. I thoroughly loved this. It is such an amazing sequel. I loved it even more than the first book, which I didn't even think was possible. Uh, I highly recommend it. I gave it five out of five stars and check out my review if you want even more details. It is spoiler free. Next, I finished Empty Smiles by Catherine Arden, which is the fourth and final book in the Small Spaces contemporary middle grade horror series. Um, and Sush, my husband, read this out loud to me. Uh, we've read out loud the entire series and we have just really enjoyed going through this series together. Um, this is a very creepy series for a middle grade audience and it is set up really neat. So each book in this series takes place during a different season and Empty Smiles, the last one takes place in summer at basically like a state fair and there are such creepy clowns and dolls and like funhouse mirrors and all these sorts of things. So it is definitely creepy. Um, and it has a lot of really intense scenes of the this group of friends, um, middle school kids, who are trying to fight back against this guy, the smiling man, who is trying to basically capture them and their families and other people and they're trying to outwit him and free themselves and other people. So this was just really, really engaging. I was kind of on the edge of my seat for a lot of this. I do think that it wrapped up a bit abruptly, a bit quickly, um, and that could have been expanded a bit more to be slightly more satisfying as the end of the whole series. But other than that, I just thoroughly enjoyed this whole series and this last installment, so I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Another series ender that I have been very much looking forward to and read this week was Her Unexpected Roommate by Jackie Lau. This is the fifth and final book in the Cider Bar Sisters contemporary romance series. Um, and this one is really, really interesting. So this series is about a group of friends, women engineers, who meet up at a cider bar like every week and hang out. Um, and this is the kind of romance of the last member of that group. And this character is very interesting and very personal, I think, to Jackie Lau. Um, there's a really nice foreword by Jackie Lau talking about her experiences with depression and her mother's suicide. So big content warnings for those topics because they're huge in this book. Um, and the main character deals with those things. And so it's very much um, a character who isn't even sure that she can be in a relationship because she has very treatment resistant depression that she's been battling with for decades. Um, and it's all about her getting her happily ever after. Um, there's definitely Definitely a lot of kind of negative self-talk and things like that in this, which I found hard to read, but I also just really loved this idea of a main character who, who doesn't have to be perfectly mentally healthy to still be somebody who's you know, worthy of love and, and able to live her life. And so I really liked that. Um, and the premise of this, by the way, is that um, the main character has a one night stand with a great guy, but then he kind of ghosts her. And a year later, she ends up accidentally ending up with him as a roommate uh, and they have to kind of get along and they get along very well. Um, and there's lots of interesting things about kind of why he goes to turn all that sort of stuff. So I thought that this was a, a great conclusion to the series and I really liked what Jackie Lau was doing with the main character, even though at times I found it a little bit hard to read. Um, but yeah, overall, I think this was a good conclusion. I gave it four out of five stars. And then my reading mood took a sudden nosedive and I was not interested in picking up absolutely anything on my TBR or anything really that accomplished any of my goals for this year. And instead, 
all I wanted to do was go and read some old favorites by Georgette Heyer. Georgette Heyer is a kind of romance and mystery author who was writing in the 1920s through 1970s. She has a huge catalog. I read everything of hers um, and I just wanted to go back and reread some of them. So I picked up Black Sheep. Black Sheep is one of my absolute favorites of hers. It's a Regency romance that has such witty banter. It is so hilarious. I was laughing throughout this. Um, it takes place in Bath and we follow a woman who is kind of late 20s, which is basically an old maid for the Regency era. Um, and her young niece, uh, who's like 17, ends up kind of falling in love with a guy who probably is just out for her inheritance. And she's trying to figure out a way to kind of separate them without making her niece turn against her. And into the picture comes the guy's uncle who has been estranged. He is a black sheep from the family. He has been working in India for you know decades and has now come back. And she finds herself totally falling for this guy, especially because he's so funny and their humor styles just really match. And this just is such a great book. There's lots of antics in this from the niece and from her sister and all sorts of other things, but just the chemistry between the two main characters um, is just fantastic. I absolutely love this book. Such a favorite. Five out of five stars. And then I decided to do one more reread by Georgette Heyer, um, but I thought, you know, rather than picking up one of the, you know, dozen or so books of hers that I've reread almost a dozen times, I thought, let me reread something of hers that I haven't reread before. So I picked up Cousin Kate, and I see why I haven't reread it. Um, this is a gothic romance, and most of the story is actually devoted to the kind of gothic aspects. Um, it is about a woman who is 24, and she is basically on her own. She doesn't have any family members that she is connected to. She's tried to be a governess, but it has not gone well. She's really struggling to find another position, doesn't know what she's going to do to support herself. And into the picture comes her kind of uh, her aunt from her father's estranged family. And her aunt uh, has, you know, a very, very nice house, a manor house, and a husband and a son, and she invites her to come stay with them, except that things are creepy and things are not right. Um, and so it has that gothic feel of creepy manor house, something not right, all those sorts of things. Um, but while she's there, she meets um, a very handsome other guy who is out there to help her. Uh, so definitely there are romance parts of this, but it's mainly the gothic stuff, and that is just like amped up drama, so much drama in this. Also, um, one of the key components of this is around mental health, and I don't think that this is the worst version of mental health, but you know, it's going to be outdated definitely um, in quite a few ways because it was written, I think, in the 1950s. Uh, but yeah, so too much drama for me, but also the plot was so engaging. And because I haven't reread this one before and it's been, you know, a decade or so since I've read it, I didn't remember what happened. So I was actually really compelled to find out what happened. So every time I'd get a little frustrated over the drama and I'd put it down, I kept thinking, yeah, but what happens next? So really compelling writing, even though too much drama for me. So overall, I gave this three and a half out of five stars. Okay, so that is everything that I read this week. I also wanted to mention that next week I'm gonna be a little bit busy, so I won't have a weekly wrap up coming up. Instead, I'll just kind of combine that with the following weekly wrap up, uh, but I do have some other videos coming up. In any case, I hope that you guys are having great reading. If you've read any of the books that I mentioned today, if you're interested in them, if you wanna chat about anything or tell me what you've been reading, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.